Hello everyone, Paul with High Tech Legion. And if you have read and looked at the benchmarks of the NVIDIA GTX 590 review, you're probably wondering why I compared it to the 580 and only did 19 by 12 on the 580 to show a comparison where I did 2560 by 1600 on the GTX 590. Reason being is, I felt that if you are going to require the eye candy or to generate some nice frames on a bigger screen, you're really going to need to crank up your AA. Because if you don't crank up the AA, you're not going to get as clear as a, as, of a picture because the pixels are going to be spread farther apart. You're not going to be as compressed. So, in that case, what I'm trying to say is, with the RecDex 11, there are a lot of new implementations with tessellation, physics, just a whole different realm of what can be offered for a video card. With the new Unreal 3 engine coming out, we are going to have implemented DirectX 11 tessellation. We are also going to be able to look at PhysX apexes. And when you add these when you add these factors in, what's going to happen is at higher resolutions you're going to have to lower your anti-aliasing, you're going to have to lower a few things in order to get acceptable screen frame rates. Now, if you look right now, we had an average of 117 frames per second in Hawks 2 on the 590 at 2560 by 1600 with 32x CSAA. Of course, the tessellation on the terrain was on, shadows are on. Everything is on high. So we generated 117 frames a second. That's very good. It's very playable. Now, where we look at our differences are, what would we need a single GPU? What are the, what are the, the resolution? What, what anti-aliasing mode and what types of settings are we going to need in order to generate that many frames on a single GPU at the 25 by 16. Okay, what I've done is, I've gone ahead, I went into the NVIDIA control panel, I shut off the multi-GPU, now I'm running just one GPU, which is a, which is, it would be equivalent to the GTX 580. Um, what I'm planning on doing is showing you the difference between what a dual GPU can do at high levels and what you need to do for a single GPU in order to get or achieve the same frame rates that you would get with the GTX 590 with the detail, the image quality, the physics, the terrain, the tessellation, etc. Now I know it's not that apparent with you right now because it's a video, but myself looking at it because I had to change some settings to low. I'm only at 2xAA. The terrain's not as crisp. It, the image quality is not as good. The shadows aren't on as well as they were before. So things do look different. And it looks a little bit more grainy. Now it's not to say that the 580 is any slouch. It is the, the fastest single GPU video card on the market, but unfortunately when you add to the 580 and enhance it and make it a 590, you're getting much better to play when in these high frame rates at higher resolutions and higher anti-aliasing and tessellation physics, etc. As you can see, at the same resolution with 2xAA, I have my environment now set to medium, texture quality to low, particle density low, view distance on medium. I still did not equal the amount of frames per second that I did 
with the GTX 590. So that's the reasoning behind why I chose to test the 580 at 19 by 12 at lower resolutions compared to the 590 with higher resolutions and higher AA and higher eye candy to kind of give you an idea that when you go step up into the range of an enthusiast card this is what you're looking for you're looking for the ability of the card to barrel through everything that DirectX 11 PhysX can throw at it. Thank you very much.